I thought that, that appointment went fine. Why was he upset with me? She was crying the whole time. There was nothing I could say to make her stop. I saw a request from my patient to release her records to a different provider. I was completely surprised. I told her she was fine physically, but that made her mad. I don't know what else I could have done. Sometimes a clinical appointment feels awkward. Maybe you and the patient don't seem like a good match for one another, or maybe you simply have different communication styles. Sometimes a patient wants something but doesn't know how to ask for it. Maybe you have news for the patient but it doesn't come out right. Empathy can help. Empathy isn't a medical intervention, but sharing or connecting with the patient's experience during the session might be the most important thing you can offer. This could look like, I can tell you're hurting, tell me more about what's going on, or you've been through a tough time. Pain can be awful, but I think we are on the right track. These are examples of simple statements that go a long way towards the perception of a shared experience with your patient. While you can't literally share the physical pain, you can share the experience of having the pain, which helps your patient feel comfortable. It matters a great deal to people that their doctors get it. How do you achieve this? Here are some simple suggestions to build empathy. Avoid clinical language. Talk to your patient like you talk to a family member. Use person-first language. The symptom is the problem you are treating and the patient has the discomfort. But it can be easy to use labels that depersonalize the relationship. Try not to think of your patient as the diabetic in room 2. Instead, think of that patient as the person so sad and frustrated with this chronic condition that he or she might be simply worn out. Body language matters. Are you typing notes while the patient is talking? Where are you looking while the patient is talking? It's not as easy as just making eye contact, as there can be cultural differences about that. But sometimes just being intentional about what you are doing while a patient talks can make a difference. Even something as simple as nodding to acknowledge that you are paying attention can be helpful. Reflect and summarize. If you reflect a patient's thoughts and feelings back to him or her and summarize a session with simple, concrete words, the patient is likely to feel validated and heard despite stress about symptoms. This also increases the patient's confidence in you and in the treatment plan. Sometimes we must look for and practice moments of empathy, and it's not always easy. After all, patients are often uncomfortable, worried, or in pain, and it's our job to help. We can better meet our patients' needs by being attentive and communicating empathy. For your patients, that can be all the difference in the world, and it's just good practice.